Good morning. Welcome to the channel. <clears throat> Welcome to Boulder. Welcome to 30th and um, Arapaho. Arapaho is running this way. It's Highway 7. And it goes up into the canyon over there in the mountains. And then this is uh, 30th, one of the north-south corridors here in Boulder, Colorado. Across the street from the Home Depot and uh, one of the large King Supers grocery stores here too. So uh, before I get started, I'm going to highlight this book right here. This is the GEC True Study book. GEC stands for Gospel Evangelist Church, church that I'm building here in Boulder and pastoring. Book three, this is book three. Uh, here's the back of it. And uh, this book has lots of information on it, has lots of instructions, and but primarily it is a book to capture your walk, your life, not your walk, but your walk in the Lord Jesus Christ as a minister. And there's a lot of bits and pieces here. It might look like it's pretty blank because it is blank, but every word here has been placed here very specifically. And this is more like a logbook. And we are doing classes every day, Monday through Friday, from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. Boulder time, mountain, mountain time. And we are going through this book. This book here has 65 classes. We're in book three. We've done two and we've done one. And uh, we're in, we just finished this morning, we did um, uh, class 152. So we've got about two more weeks or thereabouts in this book, three more weeks, whatever. And then we'll start book number four. So if you're interested in about joining our class, you want to start with book four, I would suggest. So you can go to the book patch, P-A-T-C-H dot com. When you go there, uh, up the right-hand corner, it says bookstore. Click on the bookstore. I'm in the bookstore. And then it comes up with a search bar because there's hundreds and thousands of books in the bookstore. And then, uh, isn't that wonderful? See, you see that? Those, those are mockers. Those are haters of Christ. They, they really exist here in Boulder, believe it or not. <laughs> Anyways, uh, they uh, type in GC True Study right here and all eight books will come up and you want to buy number four and the purchase price is nine dollars and 27 cents that is the printing cost only uh, there is no profit margin added to that at all i'm giving the profit margin away our church is giving the profit margin away to help pay for your shipping and handling costs the 927 is what the printer cost charges to print this and um, that's how that goes and we're believing that uh, God will supply our needs, and that we don't have to sell anything to make our ends meet. We just believe in God. And we become a giving church, not a selling church, not a merchandising church, not a church or a den of thieves, as Jesus called it. And uh, we're not trying to steal your money. We're trying to give to you. And one more thing, if you buy number four, and then you attend some of our classes, you send a picture of this book, book four, to me, and... Uh, Buy the book, and oh yeah, get on our Sunday prayer letter, because that's a part of our book, our Sunday prayer letter. Get on the email list there, that newsletter for the Sunday prayer letter. And then, you know, the, those things don't cost anything. There's just a little bit of your time to subscribe to them. Uh, we'll purchase the following book after the one you buy. So if you buy book four, for example, we'll buy book five for you free of charge. We'll pay for it. We'll ship it to you. No cost to you. And uh, we're going to go through eight books the same way. You buy the book, then we'll buy the next one after that, whatever it is. But we ask that people buy the book that we're currently in, okay? So, like, this is too close to buy book three, because by the time you get it, we'll be done with three. So if you order book four here recent, pretty soon, uh, you will have four, and then we'll start four. Something like that, okay? Anyways, that's a little advertisement for that book. Very important, the true study. That's what's building our church, along with uh, preaching the gospel. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you that we can promote what you've given us, what you have told us to do. We thank you, Lord, that we can uh, advertise for you. We can promote uh, the things that you've given us. And uh, not for gain uh, physically, but for gain in the kingdom of God. So I thank you, Lord, that the True Study book is one of those 
tools that you've given us to, to produce gain in the body of Christ for the kingdom of God. In your name, Jesus. Amen. <laughs> All right. So I want to start this off again the way I've been doing it re recently, and that is what verse I used in the scripture short. The scripture short today was Proverbs 26, verse number 11. I'll read it to you. As a dog returneth to his vomit, so a fool returneth to his folly. One more time. It's Proverbs 26, verse number 11. As a dog returneth to his vomit, so a fool returneth to his folly. So, a dog is someone who is, he's given an example. You see a lot of dogs when they poop, they come back and they smell their poop, or they sometimes, they, some of them eat it. And, some, and they, when they vomit, sometimes they'll go back and smell their vomit or eat their vomit. That's how a lot of dogs are. That's why I don't understand why people uh, kiss their dogs on their, uh, on their, kiss the dog so much. I mean, the dog eats their own poop and you're still kissing the dog. I get just, it repulses me amazingly. I raised dogs, my family raised dogs. Not my family, my mom and dad raised dogs. And uh, so a dog is somebody that he's referring to that as like a person who goes back to their vomit and the vomit represents their sin, their addiction, their evil that they have been delivered from, been set free of, and then they go back to it for whatever reason. And the Bible calls them a dog that returns back to their vomit. It's like a fool, like a fool. I'll read it one more time. As a dog returns to his vomit. We know that's a fact. We see it. I see it on the street. You know, they, they do that. All right, so do you want to be like a dog? Well, this is how you'll be if you do this. Uh, so a fool returns to his folly. So folly and vomit are similar. F vomit is what you don't want in your stomach. You upchuck, you vomit, you throw up. That what you don't want in your stomach. What in your body? That's why you ask for forgiveness. That's why you ask for deliverance. That's why you receive Christ as your savior. You don't want that sin in your life anymore. You don't want the law of sin and death in you anymore. You want to be set free of that law. You want to have liberty, right? By justice, we're justified by faith. And by faith, you're justified, and that law is null and void, right? However, criminals who have been set free, who have even served time in prison or the penitentiary, return back to their folly, return back to their vomit. We see that all over the world. It's very common. It takes a tremendous amount of self-discipline to not return to that which you were delivered from. It just, uh, so you're gonna have to pray a lot. It, it, it doesn't come automatically. A dog doesn't automatically not return to his vomit. He automatically, without thinking, returns back to the vomit. Well, a fool without thinking, and they're called a fool because they are now lacking wisdom. When you turn away from Christ and go back into the world, go back into your sin, you are no longer wise. You are now a fool, and Jesus called you a dog. Yeah, how about that? How do you like that? How do you like that? The son who died for you, that you received as Savior, you've turned your back on, and you've gone back into your sin. And now you're saying, oh, I love my folly, I love my vomit, but I also love God. That is a lie. That is called a fool, a fool. Jesus said, be holy, be righteous. Jesus said, sin no more. Jesus said, be set free. Jesus said, come away from them. Jesus said a lot of things that lets you know that we are not to entertain sin in our life. I've been preaching holiness, separation from the world since 2014, and I'm never gonna stop. I don't care if I say it on every single sermon. You cannot return back to your vomit because you are called a fool and you are called a dog. Let's pray again. So Lord, I thank you that you'll help people to see the folly that's in their life when they return back to their vomit. I praise you, Lord, for Proverbs 26, verse 11. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. Sorry I'm so hard, but I love you. So I'm warning you. That's a warning from Proverbs 26, verse 11. That's a warning. And this here is our Sunday prayer letter. 
number 254, is called The Third Day. It's found in Leviticus 7.17, our title, The Third Day. And this structure right here is a diagram that helps us logistically keep track of the 506 verses that contain the word fire. Contain the word fire. <laughs> fire containment. <laughs> How do you contain fire? And uh, we've been doing this since January 1st. And this cross member here, then there's a bar in the center. So it's kind of like a cross. The member in the middle here, this ampersand, this like an ampersand, like a and, etc. It symbolizes the soldier, soldier of Christ. I thought I was tripping over my cone. Soldier of Christ. And on the other, either side of the soldier of Christ are these scriptures with fire in them. And we're moving inward toward the soldier of Christ who is standing in the midst of the fire of God, staying pure and holy. And on his feet or under, you know, where he's standing is on scripture. These are all the scriptures here. So he's standing on the rock, the word of God. And he's, it, it just, it, it's, it's, this is for those who have eyes to see with their spirit. If you don't have eyes to see with your spirit, this really is just a bunch of mumbo jumbo to you. It just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And if it doesn't make any sense to you, uh, the challenge you may have is you really don't know the scriptures well enough. You haven't spent time with the Lord well enough. And maybe uh, you might not even be saved. You might have uh, voiced it with your mouth. You might have followed along with somebody who said, pray after me, pray after me. And you prayed after him. Let me hang on a second. Get my gloves here. Pray after me. It's really cold, sorry. Pray after me and you repeat this prayer after me. And you repeat that prayer. And all, then he says, now you're saved. Sorry, that doesn't happen that way. That doesn't happen. That's called easy believing. That's another man doctrine. Easy believing. Repeat this prayer after me. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, now you're saved. Check mark, one more saved. And you go off down the road. Yeah. I used to think that was true. But God doesn't care what you're saying. He cares about your heart. Is you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. Yeah, you believe the scripture, you believe the truth. Now, if you say the truth, like I just said, Jesus, if you're real, here I am. Now, how can that get, how can, how can be saved that way? I didn't, I didn't say repent of my sin. I didn't say, uh, Lord, wash me clean. I didn't say, Jesus, you're my Lord and Savior now. I didn't say anything. Of it like that. I just said, Jesus, if you're real, here I am. I was laid on board the operations department, middle rack, on board USS Regal, AF-58, US Navy ship, somewhere in the world during the Vietnam War. And Jesus saved me. And I've been saved ever since. I have no doubt about it. Difference from twinkle of an eye, a millisecond before that, and a millisecond after that, like night and day. I came out of the darkness, entered the light, and the light is still with me today after all these years. Five decades. May will be five decades. Fifty years. And so when people laugh at me and they mock me, do I really care? Do I really think that they're telling me the truth? No, man. Quit, quit thinking that they know something you don't know. You know, if you know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you know more than they know. That's why you should be preaching the gospel. That's also why, and, the, and how you start preaching the gospel is you give your testimony. Like I just gave a little snippet of my testimony. So what I'm doing, uh, I, yesterday I spent several hours updating all eight books. I've added a new page to the book, and it's called uh, uh, Write Your Testimony or something like that. And it's in the back, last page of the book. Well, I want everyone, except it's not on book one, it's on two, three, four, five, six, and eight. I want people to write out their testimony. Because most, most, most times when I ask people, tell me your testimony, how you came to Christ, it's very difficult for the vast majority of people to tell me their testimony on how they came to Christ. That, that first day, not everybody, but many. I can detail every little nuance of my testimony. 
I can talk for an hour on my testimony, how I got saved. And how can I do that? Because I've been telling it, I've told it, I'm going to just suppose a number probably 10,000 times in 50 years. I mean, I never shut up about my testimony. In fact, it's on the back of my, our gospel track, my salvation prayer. And we've passed out uh, how many, see, 10, uh, 16,000 of those tracks so far. 16,000 of those tracks. So, that's what we've done now. That's what the Holy Spirit had me do. And I've cleaned up a few little errors I saw in some of the other books. I spent several hours yesterday during my day off resting. Uh, and now all those refreshed books are up online. They're the March 25th edition, March 25th edition. That was yesterday. All right. All right, so let's get into a few verses here. Um, and understand that we go from ends inward. So every scripture, the first scriptures that we started with in the very beginning of our season called fire, we started in Genesis, first time fire was mentioned, and we ended, or we started also in Revelation, the last time the word fire was found in the Bible, first and the last. It points us back to Jesus. Everything we do points back to Jesus Christ, our Savior. This does too. This does too. All right, this is very similar to the uh, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, where Jesus was in the midst of them while they were in the fire. The fire was all around them, but the Word of God was with them. The Word of God was with them. So we have fire and the Word of God with the soldier and him standing on the rock, which is the Word of God. All right. So let's go to, this is, a, I didn't preach yesterday, Monday, so I'm gonna go over to Leviticus 7.19. Let's see if I can just read these verses real quick. I don't want to spend. My, I'm not feeling very good. Just today is day one of our of my uh, fasting with no food. We're in about day 57. I'm guessing. I don't know exactly. And uh, first day is really really hard. And I've had several stomach aches this morning. And I've just been asking the Lord to help me. When I have stomach aches, I can't even drink a glass of water. It's just uh, I feel like I want to throw up on a glass of water and because uh, my body is rebelling my body is telling me feed me feed me feed me i want food i want food i and they begin to do a tantrum and that's what happened about four or five times this morning it threw a tantrum and i just said lord help me my body is throwing a tantrum it wants food because for the last seven days i've had to eat i was able to eat pulse which is becoming pretty repulsive, but I've been eating pulse and drinking water. The Daniel fast in chapter one. And uh, so, but that ended last night. Actually, probably about yesterday afternoon. All right, so uh, we're, we're in uh, Leviticus 719. So that's why I don't know if I'm gonna last till three, I'll probably leave at two. Plus it's extremely cold. It's only about 30, 32 degrees, 31 degrees. It's absolutely frigid. We still have snow on the ground. Snow can't even melt. <laughs> Springtime, welcome to Colorado. 719 says, And the flesh that toucheth any unclean thing shall not be eaten. It shall be burnt with fire. The flesh shall be burnt with fire. And as for the flesh, and all that be clean shall be shall eat thereof. Let me read it one more time. So this is verse 19. And the flesh that toucheth any unclean thing shall not be eaten. It shall be burnt with fire. As for the flesh, and all that be clean shall eat thereof. So once again, we're not teaching Leviticus. We're not teaching Leviticus. We're just mentioning scriptures that have the word fire in them. But we're noticing that in Leviticus, we're understanding some information of who God is. Who God is. We know that God is very detailed, very exact. He's not sloppy, not dirty. He's very precise with everything He's doing. And He wants us to be the same as He is. So when you look at your house and it's an absolute pig pen, disaster, filthy and dirty, you look at yourself and you've got dirty clothes on, you haven't taken a shower for four or five days or a, or a week. 
That, what's that about? That's not godly. I don't, sorry, I'm sorry, that's not godly. Filthy, dirty clothes, filthy body, filthy surroundings you live in is not godly. I don't care what you think it is, it is not of God. It is of Satan. That doesn't mean that a clean house means that Satan is not there. That's, I'm not saying that either, because some of the cleanest places are filled with devils. So don't get that either. Because God is very exact. He is pure. Filth and dirt is not pure. All right? That's physical and spiritual. And in a believer's life, if they have dirt and filth in their life, that oftentimes is a tale of something spiritual going on in their life. That is evil. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I know what I'm saying. I don't care if you don't believe me. I know what I know what I know. I know what I know what I know. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I know it. I lived it. I've read it in the Bible many times. What verse, one of the verses that popped in my mind right now, because everything I say must be in the Word of God. If it is not in the Word of God, throw whatever I say out the door. It is of no value. That's the way. I don't care if it sounds good. If it is not in the Word of God, throw it out of your life immediately. Don't hang on to it for a second. I don't care if you like me or hate me. Throw it out of your life. So the verse I'm using is when Moses, when God told Moses, I want everybody to take a bath, I want everybody to wash their clothes, clean their tent, and clean the whole camp because I'm coming to town. I didn't say that exactly, but I'm coming to the mountain, you know. And also, another verse is where to be like Christ. Christ is not filthy, not got dirty. Christ is not all tattooed up. Christ does not have earrings hanging from his ears, from his nose and his belly button. Christ does not have wicked clothing on. Christ does not have some wicked haircut on. And you say you're a believer. You see, these are little things that the body of Christ is accepting. Jesus is not homosexual. He's not a sodomite. He's not a lesbian in any way, shape, or form. He's not gay in any way, shape, or form. All those funny words. He's not a queer. LGBTQ. Q means queer. That's what we used to call everybody. You're a queer. Now they think that's offended, but it's in their title. Take it out of your title if you don't like it. But apparently it's not offensive to them. They like it. Okay? So let's go over to the corresponding verse in the New Testament, and that's 22, Luke 22, 55. Luke 22, 55. Man, my nose is so cold. It wants to run because it's so cold. Uh, 20, uh, man, I messed up. Sorry, I forgot. 2255. It's hard to turn with my gloves on. 2255. 2255. Hang on, I'm getting there. 2255. All right, I think that's it. Let me see if I, is that right? Yeah, yeah that's it. There, there's right there. Luke 22, 55. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were set down together, Peter sat down among them. Listen to this again. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were set down together, Peter sat among them. Peter sat among them. Peter sat among them. You think about what we read here in uh, Luke, uh, Leviticus 7, 719. I gotta take these gloves off. I can't keep things and organize. 719, I wanna read this over here. And the flesh that toucheth any unclean shall not be eaten. It shall be burnt with fire. Peter was touching unclean stuff. He was sitting by the fire. And as for the flesh, Peter's flesh, all that be clean shall eat thereof. But was Peter's flesh clean? No, he was sitting amongst the sinners, the mockers, the haters, the ones who wanted to crucify his Savior, the Messiah of the children of Israel. Right? And here's Peter sitting among them. Je Jesus taught, come away from them, come away, come away, come away, come away. Get away from them. 
I don't care if it's cold and they've got a fire burning, stay away from them. Unless, unless, listen, unless the Lord has asked you to go there and, and if he asks you to go there, then you're going to be a witness, a testimony to the sinners. But Peter wasn't sent there by God. He was sent there by his flesh. And no flesh is going to glory in the presence of God. Jesus already prophesied to him that you're going to deny me three times before morning, before the cock crows. Yeah. Does Jesus know that you're going to sin? Yep. Yep. Does Jesus know I was going to be here today? Yep. Does Jesus know you're going to click off in about three seconds? Yep. Does Jesus know what's in your heart this very moment? Yep. Check your heart. Let's go to Leviticus 7.25. Leviticus 7.25. 7.25. All right, it says here, For whosoever eateth the fat of the beast, of which men offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, even the soul that eateth it shall be cut off from his people. This is a really a tough verse here. Because I hadn't... There's, so in other words, he's talking about there are offerings that you're not supposed to take. There are offerings that let me let me read it one more time i'll explain it just a second because the moment i said it, it's really hard to understand all of a sudden the information of to understand it was open to me but as i read it i said it doesn't make any sense lord and the holy spirit immediately opened my eyes i think that's interesting so but let me read it one more time for whosoever eateth the fat of the beast of which men offer an offering made by fire unto the lord even the soul that eateth it shall be cut off from his people so, I gotta put my glove on. So if you eat or take into you an offering that you've made by fire, or an offering you've decided to give to God, or something like that, and you say, for example, uh, let me say for example, what can I do for an example? For example, you set aside an offering, okay? And you say, you give that offering, but for some reason, uh, you didn't give that offering to the ministry which just means you gave it to the Lord. You give your offering to the Lord and the Lord tells you where to put your offering, all right? But instead, you don't do that. You don't do what God told you to do. You take that offering, you take that offering and you buy something for your flesh, which could be you're gonna pay your rent. Yeah, that's what people do with their tithes instead of when God says give a tenth, which is just a tiny portion of what he wants you to give. He wants you to give 100%. But let's just say you're going to be a, you're going to tithe, give 10% of something. Don't call it a tithe if you don't like the word tithe. So you're going to give a portion, let's say 10% or 11%, let's don't let's call it 11% or call it 9, whatever you want to do. And you all of a sudden lose your job. And you already wrote your tithe check out, 10% of your gross income before taxes before that you pay the government, before you pay anything, you pay God first, before you pay your government, even though they take it out before you get your check, doesn't matter, timing doesn't matter. But when you get the money, that's, that's when you pay your tithe. But that tithe is equal to your, let's say for example, a major portion of your rent or your food, or something that's very important to you, all right? Then you just lost your job that day. Your check is in your wallet. You're going to go to the church that Sunday. This is Tuesday. It's in your wallet. You're going to give it on Sunday. But now, you and your wife sit down and say, you know, I don't, honey, I don't think we should give our tithe this month because I don't have the job to go to. This, that was my last paycheck. And we're not going to have, I don't have another job to go to. So uh, let's just not pay, give God our tithe this time. Let's just use it for our rent. Yeah. That's forbidden. That's forbidden. Does it happen? Yep. Oh well. So that's an extreme example, I think. Maybe not. I don't know. So let's go over to Luke 17, 29. Corresponding verse over in Luke. Luke 17, 29. Luke 17, 29. 
All right. It says here in 29, Luke 17, but the same day that the lot, that lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Destroyed them all. Destroyed them all. Lot and his wife left Sodom. And when they left Sodom, so Lot and his wife, what was her name? I forget. Uh, I forget her name. I'm sorry. I apologize. Won't keep you from heaven if you don't remember Lot's wife's name. Uh, so they're like an offering to God. Okay? Lot and his wife. They're like an offering to God. And for example, this is kind of a stretch of an imagination. And they left Sodom, and fire began to fall. However, Lot's wife did what Proverbs 26, 11 is. She turned as a dog back to his, her vomit, and she was like a fool returning to her folly. And she died immediately at that turning away from the offering. It was forbidden to turn around. Forbidden to turn around. Do not look at the fire coming down. Keep your back to the devastation. Keep going forward in Christ, in, the, in God. But she didn't do that. She returned and she was immediately destroyed. She was forbidden to turn around by God and she turned around anyway. And that was, that's the problem when people do things that are forbidden by God and God says, don't do this. In other words, it is forbidden, and you do it anyways. You're not killed right away like Lot's wife was because we're in grace. Grace was not present at that time. Grace was not present, but the law, the letter of the law was present through Abraham, father of faith. And the letter kills, it kills. And that's what happened to Lot's wife. So, but she would not have been destroyed if she have not, if she would have obeyed God's commandment, and that is to not, not turn around and look at the devastation. Okay, I mean, I know that's kind of stretching, paraphrasing quite a bit there, but you can see a lot of that in the scripture. Go now, now, if you don't like what I just said, then go to the King James Bible on your own and dig in there and find those verses that talk about that. And then you read the whole story. Yeah. And really come to an understanding. And then now, now you go preach it. Just don't say, well, John doesn't know what he's talking about. He doesn't really say that or this. And it does. Now you go preach. See? And I, I'm challenging you to go preach on this story. I'm challenging you to do that. I dare you. <laughs> I know you won't do it, but oh well. So that was uh, Levit uh, Leviticus 7.25 coupled with Luke 17.29 and uh, Leviticus 7.19 coupled with Luke 22.55. And with that, we also read Proverbs 26 verse 11, which I'm going to do one more time. Proverbs chapter 26 verse 11. As a dog returneth to his vomit, so a fool returneth to his folly. You think God is fooling around? You think God is a fool? I don't think so, man. You think God knows what he's doing? Yeah, he does. He really does. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you that we can read, study, and heed, and walk in your word by the power of the Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you give us that power by your spirit. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for giving us the power to walk in the Word of God and to be a soul winner here in the kingdom of God. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you're doing, even now. In your holy name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. All right, so that's it for today. God bless you, man. I love you very much. Take care, all right?